Lunes to Lunes and the palace is again addressing concerns about the president's health. Are they hiding anything? Google restricts Huawei's use of Android. Anong epekto nito para sa mga gumagamit na kanilang produkto? Government officials just met to discuss vinegar. Will they finally tell us which brands are fake? And trending online, wow, cool post. Thanks for sharing. Saan ang galing ito? This is Atom Aralio. Stand with us, stand for truth. Na-confine ba ang presidente sa ospital? Ang diretsa niyang sagot, hindi. But did the president go to the hospital? He is neither confirming nor denying that. Gerald Uy has more. Sa Twitter, nag-trending ang hashtag nasaan ang Pangulo. Tiniyak ng Malacanang na maayos ang kalusugan ni Pangulong Duterte. Itong Sunday, uh, kumalat yung kwento sa social media na sinugod daw dito si President Duterte at nag-cold blue parang itong hospital na to. Tinanggi naman ng Malacanang ang Dio Manoy Chismis na ito at mismong si dating Special Assistant to the President Bongo ang nagpadala ng manitrato showing the President na nagsasayin ng papers at kumakain at may hawak pang mga pahayagan. Yung ganitong estilo para ipakita na nasa maayos sa kalagayan ng Pangulo, hindi na bago. Nandyan yung FB Live ni Bongo na pinapakitang nakikipag-dinner siya sa isang dating commissioner ng Climate Change Commission at yung litrato kung saan naman nanonood siya ng Netflix. I said, uh, I'm alive. Uh, fairly healthy. Hindi naman daw masisisi ang tao sa pagtatanong dahil ang huling public appearance si President Duterte ay yung pagboto niya noong election. Pero sabi ng Malacanang, nandito na siya sa Maynila noong Friday pa lamang at kasama niya ang kanyang pamilya. It's ang alam ko kasama niya si Ma'am Hanlon, naka si Kitty. The President's health is a public issue and I think uh, the Filipino people deserves the right to know about the state of his health. Hindi nandun lang siya sa bahay pagbabago, hmm. signing papers. Para sa kanya, it's not a serious matter. Kasi kung serious yun, he always tell the public about it. This is also a security issue that everyone should know of. Naway, mas mabigyan pa tayo ng mas malino na preba ukol sa kanyang kalusugan. Dahil sa huli ang bansa natin ng kawawa, kung siya naman ay malagay sa alanganin. Gerald Uy, I stand for truth. Lagi natin na pag-uusapan yung kalusugan ng Pangulo and the palace says it's not a big deal but it clearly is, Richard. Bakit nga ba? Well, first of all, meron tayong very bad experience in the past. No? Nung panahon ng uh, dictatorship uh, mm -hmm. ni President Ferdinand Marcos, may mga ilang taon na actually may sakit siya. No? Ang problema dyan is nung nakasakit yung Presidente, may paksyon-paksyon na nag mm -hmm. at hindi klaro masyado yung direksyon ng bansa. At in fact, Atom, ito yung problema sa mga authoritarian system. Yung power ay masyadong concentrated sa isang tao. So the moment na may konting doubt dun sa kalusugan ng tao na yan, dun sa direksyon ng kanyang polisiya, there's confusion outside pero minsan batis sa loob ng palasyo nagkakaroon mm -hmm. na confusion. Are you saying that we have an authoritarian uh, government currently? We may not have technically a dictatorship or authoritarian system pero klarong-klaro yung power ay napaka-concentrated kay Pangulong Duterte. In fact, yung brand ni Pangulong Duterte is very much authoritarian even though he's not technically a dictator. Normally, a private person can say my health is private, di ba? Pero pag naging presidente ka, you lose that kind of privacy. Mm. Kailangan mo sabihin sa mga tao kung yung state of health mo. Bakit nga ba? What is at stake? Well, Atom, let's be also very, very fair no? sa Malacanang. Mm. May level of privacy even yung public official. So for instance, kung ako itumakbang bilang official or anyone mm -hmm. or ikaw, hindi mandatory na i-release natin yung ating health card for instance. Pero ang problema dito is klarong-klaro sa ating salagayong batas na dapat may transparency sa level ng presidente because mm -hmm. of that bad experience. And remember, President Duterte is the commander in chief siyang in charge sa armed forces of the Philippines siya yung chief executive ng bansa natin ngayon of course siya is a very popular president at siya yung nagpo-push ng specific political and legislative agenda in the next three years so kung hindi klaro yung kalusugan ng presidente and let's be also very clear nung sinasabi ng saligang bastas natin in cases of serious illness mm -hmm. so kung yung may cold ka lang or ganun okay lang yan but if we're talking about serious illness and not to mention the fact that even the president tends to joke about his health mm -hmm. and then the fact that siya ang pinakamatandang presidente natin at pumasok siya into presidency way into his 70s. So pag pinagsama-sama mo yung mga bagay-bagay na yan, understandable na may mga tao na nag-worry ano bang maging direksyon ng bansa. And then plus the fact that we have a specific political context. 
which is yung ating vice presidency is seen as a bastion of the opposition. So may mga concerns dito, magiging smooth ba yung constitutional transition in an event that the president has to either temporarily or permanently vacate his position in office. And because of the fact na sobrang polarized yung politics natin, daming tao nag-worry what is gonna happen next. Big news in tech. Google is cutting Huawei off Android. That's after the U.S. government added Huawei to a trade blacklist. Duda kasi ng Trump administration, pwedeng magamit ang Huawei technology sa pag-spy sa kanilang gobyerno. Especially as many companies are using Huawei to move to 5G tech. Because of the blacklist, Huawei's smartphone business outside China will lose access to Android updates. E paano kung naka-Huawei phone ka? Don't panic. Current owners will still be able to use and download app updates provided by Google. Pero yung future Huawei phones, yung public version na lamang ng Android ang magagamit. If things don't change, those future users will lose access to Google services like Gmail, YouTube, and the Google Play Store. Still in tech, marami nang gumagaya sa Wow, cool post, thanks for sharing comments. But even more are saying, thanks but no thanks. Shai Lagarde reports. Wow, cool post. Thanks for sharing. Wow, cool post. Thanks for sharing. Wow, cool post. Thanks for sharing. Kung nakapag-Facebook ka the past few days, malamang na naabutan mo ang comments na yan. Ano nga bang meron? Bakit nga ba nagdagsaan ang mga comments na ganito sa ilang Facebook pages? Sabi ng commenter sa Reddit, isang online discussion community, this started with a US-based gaming website, IGN. Gawain daw ito ng trolls para malunod sa comment ang post nila to discourage them from posting more. Masyado na raw kasi silang pawok. Sabi naman ng iba, ginagamit daw to para mag-effortless commenting ka para lagi kang top fan. So, paano ba nag-work yung mga badges na ganyan? Yung badge na yun, um, madali na naman siya. So, para sa mga tao na gustong maging yeah, engaging sa mga iba-ibang pages. So, hindi lang siya sa pagko-comment, but uh, pag-share, pag-engage really sa iba't ibang users and also pag may message sa, sa page or lagi mo talagang um, chini-share or, or nakikipag-engage ka dun sa post. Na-experience nyo na ba to uh, before the wow cool post? Dati, may mga ganito na rin bang mangyari? Yeah, meron yung mga mahilig magsabi ng first sa comment, tapos mga sampu silang gano'n. Actually, nung una, yung wow cool post, a bit funny pa siya. Pero ngayon, a bit corny na. I would have to categorize it under bandwagoners. When one of my friends posted, lahat kami nag-reply noon. And for the reason of, gusto namin siya kasa rin. And then second is that it's trending. Doon ko na-realize na tayong mga netizens ay eh, nagkakaisa pagdating sa mga ganyang trip. Pagdating sa mga ganyang kalokohan. Yung mga trip-trip lang yan. Pag-totrol. So engagements really do count. I don't really mind it. Especially sa algorithm na yun. Kahit luma na yung ano mo, post mo. Pag may nagko-comment, lalabas yung ulit sa news feed. Kahit spam comment, lalabas pa din yan. Or aakyat pa din yan. You get more exposure. For the most part, hindi naman siya big deal. Pero gaya ng pag-target sa IGN, may mga instances na hindi nakakatulong ang pag-flood ng spam comments kahit pakatuwaan lang ito. We just usually wait for the trend to die down and then we just focus on making sure the stories are strong. For example, mga news outlet, they want people to react to the news. Pero pag mga puro wow cool post yung sinasabi, nadidilute yung message. Hiningi natin ang input ng Facebook Philippines tungkol dito at ayon sa community standards nila, ang paulit-ulit na comments na walang kinalaman sa original content ay considered spam. Pwede itong ma-remove kung ire-report ng makakakita. Pwede rin daw i-filter ng page managers ang ganitong phrases to keep them from appearing. Hindi naman masama ang makisabay sa trending, pero wala pa ring tatalo sa sincere and meaningful interaction. I'm Shai Lagarde, and we stand for truth! From high-tech, let's go back to the low-tech. Ayon sa Namfil, dapat bumalik na daw tayo sa manumanong butuhan. Bakit naman? Manal Sugadol finds out. Isang linggo na ang nakalipas ng matapos ang 2019 election. At sa ngayon, 97% na ang nabilang mula sa automated election system. Sa kasulukuyan, nangunguna si Cynthia Villar na may mahigit 25 million votes. 
para sa 11 at 12 spot ay pinag-aagawan nila Bong Revilla na may 14.5 million at si Nancy Binay na may 14.4 million. Pero, mas mabilis pa raw ang bilangan ngayon kumpara sa 2016 elections na inabot ng dalawang linggo. We are dealing with the same devices, right? Uh, the same machines. We are dealing with essentially the same system. Um, and, and we are experiencing fewer problems now than we did before. Lalong mas mabilis yan kumpara sa manumanong bilangan na inaabot minsan ng buwan. Pero bakit gusto ng Namprel na bumalik sa old school na pagbibilang? Ang problema nga natin, yung pagbibilang. No? Dapat, mano-manong binibilang yan sa presinto na nakikita ng watcher, nakikita ng citizen's arm, nakikita ng mga representatives. Gusto ng Namprel na magkaroon ng hybrid na election system kung saan ang bilangan ay ginagawa sa loob ng presinto at ang resulta nito ay automated transmission. Automated pa rin siya. Pero yung mga components na dapat uh, i-automate, no? may mga bagay na hindi dapat i-automate, may mga bagay na dapat i-automate. So, hybrid voting siya. So, yung nakita natin ngayon, di ba? Nung nagkaroon ng halalan, di ba? Tapos binilangan ng makina, pagdalos ng dato, nawala. Ito naman ang sagot ng Comelec. Katulad ng sinabi ng chairman namin, that is the prerogative of Congress. Uh, as far as the Comelec is concerned, Thus far, uh, naging successful naman yung elections natin. Overall, you can see that we are proceeding very smoothly. Makakapag-proclaim tayo na maaga. Ano man ang magiging election procedure sa darating na eleksyon 2022, ang importante, ang boto natin ay protektado at binilang na may respeto. I am Manaso Gadol and I stand for truth. Alam nyo bang pati suka, fake na rin? At hindi fake news yan ha? Ba kaya naman, pwede nang malaman kung anong mga brands yan. Ardo Miravalles reports. Uy! Tara, kain tayo. Quick, quick. Sa dapat, may sausawa na suka. Teka, teka. Bago tayo sumausaw o magluto gamit ang suka, nakakasiguro ba tayo na hindi to fake? Ayon kasi sa studies ng Philippine Nuclear Research Institute or PNRI, 8 out of 10 vinegar brands are fake. Out of the uh, 17 brands that are in the supermarkets, we found, for example, 14 misrepresented and only 3 uh, containing natural uh, biogenic acetic acid. Bakit hindi natin i-reveal ang identity nitong mga brand? Meron tayong legal limitations na hindi natin pwedeng i-divulge yung, yung mga brands. Pero we are still able to, to protect the interests of the public uh, by, uh, by sending our results to the FDA. Our test is a modification of a former a test in Japan which uses nuclear analytical techniques. So, ganun po natin na discriminate yung uh, tunay na suka sa peke na suka sa presence ng, ng moderno carbon or antigo na carbon. Is there a timeline or there will be a disclosure of, this, of these brands? Kailan ba sasabihin yung Kasi lang, bukot tayong sila lang kung nakakalag. Yan yung apat na to. Walang pinagkaiba chemically. Kasi ang reaction niya is as a chemical. So yung source of carbon or the provenance of carbon is not an issue with respect to safety. Pagkatapos ng studies ng PNRI, ano kaya naman ang next steps ng gobyerno? Hindi natin mandato ang uh, food safety. Ito ay mandato ng Food and Drugs Administration. Uh, our data will only serve as a policy recommendation uh, to the regulatory uh, agency. Maganda ang hangarin ng PNRI para itaas ang standards of production ng condiments tulad ng suka. Sana sa tulong ng mga ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, tuloy-tuloy ang pagsulong nito. I'm Ardo Miravalles and I stand for truth. Say hello to our new senators, guys. Why are you surprised? Because I sure wasn't. Ito guys, five days before the midterm elections, Comelec named PDP Laban as a dominant majority party. No surprise, no issue. Kaso lang, they designated the Nationalista Party as the dominant minority party. Ang problema, 
The two parties are actually part of the dominant ruling coalition. In short, the Nationalist Party is a de facto ally of the administration. Kung maalala natin, both of them fielded candidates under the hukbong ng pagbabago senatorial slate. So sino naman ang kasama dyan sa hukbong coalition? Of course, andun yung PDP Lab. And Nationalist Party, andun din yung Nationalist People's Coalition or NPC, Laban ng Demokratikong Pilipino or LDP, at of course, Lakas Christian Muslim Democrats. Although, yung majority ng winners sa 2019 senatorial elections ay galing sa administration coalition, may mga ibang party din na sumali sa race na yan. Of course, kasama dyan yung Ocho Derecho at yung Liberal Party and 13 other more opposition parties. So in total, almost 20 parties competed in the senatorial race. Now you might ask, bakit ang daming political parties na kasama dun sa eleksyon? Well, ayon sa 1987 Constitution, a free and open party system shall be allowed to evolve according to the free choice of the people. Hey guys, free for all. Meaning, there's not much provisions or limitation pagdating sa mga political parties and how they are established. That's just that. Or, has it just been taken advantage of and hijacked by prominent political families and dynasties? I'm kay Dr. Jean Franco, galing sa Political Science Department of University of the Philippines, Diliman. When it comes to our political parties, the problem is, hindi sila mature. Kasi nga guys, our political parties splinter into different factions and then nag-merge sila during elections and then later on, they form coalitions during a certain elections. Ang gulo po. It's a free-for-all mess. To a point that it's very difficult to even tell them apart. Pangalan pa lang, confused na tayo guys. It's almost as if they're just using keywords. The only way we can tell them apart is to determine which political clan controls them. For instance, the PDP Laban is essentially the party of the Pimentels and since 2016, also the party of President Duterte. Sa nationalista naman, sino mga in charge yan? Of course, the Villiers and the Marcoses. And pagdating sa Liberal Party, you know that, Rojases and Aquinos. In other words, they are political parties in name only. Ano ba dapat ang itsura ng political parties? What is a genuine and real political party? Well, let's look at the United States. John, there is a clear difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. These parties also give their candidates the machinery and resources they need for the campaign period, which are actually very expensive and difficult to pull off. Hindi lang sila labels for politicians or specific political dynasties. In the US, citizens identify themselves along partisan lines, and it's clear to them what they really stand for. Eh dito sa atin, it's all about personal allegiances, political families, and so-called DDS, and Dilawan, and so on and so forth. But in the end, as President Manuel Quezon said, my loyalty to my party ends where my loyalty to my country begins. And that's it for our first episode this week. Be the first to comment or kung hindi naman, just like and share our episode. And don't forget to hit subscribe. This is Ata Maralio together with Richard A. Darian and Joy Spring. Stand with us, stand for truth.